Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here, going over 5.01 Thermal Energy. So we're starting a new unit and it's going to be all about energy, specifically thermal energy, which has to do with temperature and heat. Get ready to take notes. So here are our goals for the lesson. Explain heat in terms of molecular energy. Explain that heat always flows from warmer to colder objects, so it never goes from cold to warm, it's always warm to cold. Describe the motion of molecules in heat flow. Contrast thermal energy, heat, and temperature, and define calorie and a joule. Thermal energy equals the internal energy of the movement of particles. Particles meaning atoms, ions, molecules, compounds. So I'll say particles, I think it's easiest to think of it as atoms. So again, thermal energy is the internal energy of the movement of particles. The fact that all atoms are always moving. So that movement is called thermal energy. Thermal energy can be transferred, and when we transfer that energy, we have heat, and it always goes from hot to cold. Thermal energy is measured as temperature, and thermal energy is indicated or basically determined by molecular motion. Temperature. Temperature is how thermal energy is measured. Notice how I underline the word measured. Because temperature and heat are words that we use in common everyday language, and they have very specific and different definitions in chemistry, it's easy to get confused. So whenever I think of temperature in chemistry class, I'm thinking about how I'm measuring the thermal energy, how I'm measuring how fast or slow the atoms are moving. Temperature is the average kinetic energy of the particles in a substance. So it's how much the atoms are moving. So how much it's moving, measuring that movement is temperature. The actual movement is what causes thermal energy. And temperature again, the faster the particles are moving, the higher the temperature. So if you have ice versus a glass of water, which one has faster moving particles? The glass of liquid water is moving faster than the ice. Heat. Heat is the transfer of thermal energy. So we have to have a change in energy or a transfer. So we have to have a change. Okay, that's the big key here. It's a verb. Okay, this is the transfer. Temperature is the measuring of it, and thermal energy is the fact that atoms are moving. So they're moving, thermal energy, we measure that movement, that's the temperature. Some of that movement and energy is transferred, that is heat. So heat is measured by a change in temperature. Collisions of particles transfer thermal energy. Collisions of particles transfer thermal energy. Particles are constantly colliding because they're moving, so they're bumping into each other. Particles with high energy transfer some energy to slower particles. This continues until all the particles have the same energy and therefore the same temperature, and then equilibrium has been reached. Let's look at the word equilibrium. What word part do you see right here? Equal. So when everything has the same amount of energy, then the measurement of that energy of motion is the same, so therefore it's the same temperature, and we call that equilibrium. So let's look at a few animations of this. So my first animation is I look at something that is very hot. I look at something that is cooler. This one has a higher temperature. It has a measurement of higher amount of collisions because they're moving faster, they're moving more, and so you're going to have more collisions, and we record that as a higher temperature. Over here, the molecules are moving slower. So are there going to be more or less collisions? Less collisions. And since we're measuring less collisions, we would say it has a lower temperature. All right, so let's look at this. We're going to show how heat is a measurement of the transfer of energy. So over here, it is very hot. That means the particles are moving what? Fast. Down here, it is cooler. 
so the particles are moving slower. So as you can see, if we just look at the thermometer, we can see that there is heat occurring because heat is a change of energy. And what we're seeing is that one side gets cooler, the other side gets warmer, and when do they stop? They stop when they're at equal temperatures, and that word is, do you remember it? That word is equilibrium. So we have that transfer of heat. So let's look at the actual molecules. Okay, so this is showing the molecules of the glass on the left and the molecules of the glass on the right. So here we have boom and boom. All right, so let's look at it again. And there's a molecule with high energy over on this side. And it bumps into the edge of the glass. And it causes the molecules of the glass to have more energy. And you can see that by the fact that they're vibrating faster. They're moving faster. Now, notice as the molecule comes in from the right, is it moving fast or slow? It's moving slow. And then, whoa, it starts going really fast at the end because some of that energy that was transferred to the glass gets transferred to the green molecule on the right. And what do you notice about the glass molecules here? They went back to what looks like not moving, which I don't like, because really they should have showed them doing what? They should have showed them vibrating, because all molecules are always moving, unless you have absolute zero, which we haven't even proved yet. So all molecules are always moving. You have a transfer of energy, which is heat. And then it makes that one go faster. And that's how we get our two containers at equilibrium. Heat transfers in a glass of ice water. Think again about the ice water example. How does heat transfer here? So ice molecules at negative 20 degrees Celsius move more slowly than water molecules, which at this case are 21 degrees Celsius. Fast moving water molecules collide with the ice crystals and transfer thermal energy to them. All right, so the water is moving faster, right? Do, 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 and it's hitting, it's colliding with the ice. Boom, ba -doom, boom, 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 right? And some of that energy is going from the water molecules into the ice molecules. So after they collide, are the water molecules going the same speed or slower or faster? Well, it gave up some of its energy. So the water molecules are going to be going a little bit slower. And the ice molecules are going to be moving how? Faster. And so the temperature of the ice is going to increase. As the ice crystals vibrate faster and faster, they eventually break apart and melt into liquid water. The melted ice and surrounding liquid reach the same equal temperature that is between 0 degrees Celsius and 21 degrees Celsius. So if you're thinking, well, wait a minute, how come it's not exactly at 0? Well, if you notice here, too, they're adding heat to the system. And ice has to be at what temperature to melt? It has to be at zero degrees. And so we're adding more heat. We're continuing to give the water more energy so that it can continue to bump into the ice and they can hit the same temperature. They can hit the same speed of all molecules moving. And therefore, they would be at equilibrium. And so here we can look at the molecules. Woohoo! They're having a party. They're moving all over. They're bumping into the ice, which is just shivering <laughs> or vibrating. And eventually, they will all be at equilibrium. They will all be moving at the same speed. High to low. Energy is always transferred from areas of high energy, where it's warmer or hotter, to areas of low energy, where it's cooler. And I put the picture of the waterfall because it's an easy way to remember. Gravity works the same way, right? It's high to low. They always fall down. So energy goes from where it's high to where it is lower until they're at the same amount of movement or the same temperature, and then you have equilibrium. Heat is the transfer of energy and is measured by a change in temperature. So you have to have a change in temperature, which is a transfer of energy in order to have heat. Heat is an action, it's a verb. Scientists express how heat is used in the units of calorie and joule. So you know that we measure temperature in what units? 
Well, in the United States, we use Fahrenheit, and in science class, we use Celsius or Kelvin. And when we're talking about the transfer of energy, that's different, so we have to have different units. So we use either calorie, abbreviated CAL, the amount of heat it takes to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Because remember, it has to be a change. So it's a certain amount, and it's specifically changed one degree Celsius. A joule is just another term, but one calorie is equal to about four joules. So for every one calorie, we can say we have about four joules of heat. Now, typical amounts of heat in many heat transfers are on the order of thousands of calories. So kilocalories, or K-C-A-L, or thousands of joules, kilojoules, or K-J. For example, when you heat eight ounces of water, so a cup of water, from room temperature to boiling, for tea or coffee or whatnot, you must add about 18,700 calories or 78,300 joules of heat to water. Now, they also have calorie as in capital C, which is really a kilocalorie, and that's how the energy of food is measured. So just thought I threw that in there, that in this case, lowercase calorie is different than capitalized calorie. So to summarize, thermal energy, temperature, and heat are not the same. Here are the differences between these terms. Thermal energy, the internal kinetic energy of all particles in any substance. Kinetic means movement. So the fact that things are moving, that's thermal energy. Temperature is the measure of thermal energy within any substances. Temperature measures the average kinetic energy of all the particles in a substance. So how fast they're moving, that's the temperature. The faster they move, the blank the temperature. The faster they move, the higher the temperature. Heat, the change in thermal energy of a substance. Heat is measured by a change in temperature. If the temperature went up or increased, we say heat was gained. If the temperature decreased, we say heat was lost. Heat is the transfer of thermal energy. It's the transfer of that movement. All objects have internal kinetic energy, the energy of movement, or thermal energy, which causes molecules to move. Thermal energy is measured as temperature and moves from hot objects to cold one, high to low. Fast-moving particles from warm objects collide with slow-moving molecules from cold objects, thereby transferring thermal energy. Heat is the movement of thermal energy, or in other words, the movement of that energy. So I like this for showing heat because boom, transferred, going slow, boom, transferred energy over there. So this is the best representation of heat. Heat is measured by a change in temperature because you're changing how fast the molecules are moving and temperature is a measurement of how fast they're going. Kind of think of temperature as a cop that has its radar on and it's tracking how fast is your car going, right? The cops can sit there with their radar guns and tell how fast you're going. Well, a thermometer is really like a cop with a radar gun. The thermometer is checking how fast the molecules are moving. Heat is a measure of the change in temperature. At constant pressure, if there is no change in temperature between two objects, there is no heat transfer. Heat is a measure in units of calories and joules. Again, temperature is measured in Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. And one calorie is about four joules. You do not have to memorize this exact number. Thermal energy. The transfer is called heat. It flows from hot to cold. Thermal energy is measured as temperature. So think of that cop sitting there with the radar gun. How fast are the molecules moving? That's your temperature or your speed. Thermal energy is indicated by molecular motion. In other words, the fact that molecules are moving, that's your thermal energy. All right, that's it. Go ahead and do the pre-quiz. And as always, let me know if you need help.